What's up gamers, my name is Ruben with Nerd Space Games and I'm here to help you guys become better victims for the newest survival horror experience, Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Game. If you played Dead by Daylight, you would probably know that this is very similar to that same game style. And just like Dead by Daylight, this game has a big learning curve to it. There's a lot of things being thrown at the players all at once and it's a lot to handle. It's a lot to kind of figure out and learn on your own. And yes, there's a bunch of tutorial videos, which by the way, I recommend watching those tutorial videos, but there are a lot of things that the videos don't really cover or barely touch upon. And that's what I want to focus on with this episode of Nerd Space. I want to dive down into Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the side of the victims and help you guys understand how to be a better victim and learn new strategies to help you escape on your first or second attempt from the family. So my name is Ruben with Nerd Space Games and here are my top 10 biggest tips for being a victim in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. Let's get it. Number one, knowing your escape routes. So yeah, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game, one of the most important things you need to know as a victim is how to escape from the family. Now, there are four different exit gates scattered around every single map in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And each of these exit gates evolve you trying to solve a specific situation to escape out of them. For example, if you decide to focus on the rear exit, you will find that there is a gate that is attached to a car battery. And if that car battery is on, well, you guess it. That means that area is electrified. And if you try to escape through that gate without turning off that car battery, well, you get electrocuted. So not a good idea. So you have to turn off the car battery. And then on top of that, the gate is also locked, which means you have to pick that lock as well. There is also the front exit, which kind of involves the same situation where you have to turn off a generator. So that way you can escape through the front entrance. Now, the more unique ways, and I find to be a little bit more difficult than the others, are the fuse box exit and the pressure valve exit. Now the fuse box involves you finding a fuse located somewhere on the map, bringing it to the fuse box, putting the fuse inside that fuse box, and then solving a puzzle. Sometimes the fuse box is locked, so you might need a lock pick to actually break it open. But once that puzzle is solved, you turn on the fuse box, and then the basement exit, which obviously is located in the basement, opens up for a specific amount of time and then you have to get to that basement exit before the time runs out or you don't make it and you don't escape and you have to come back to the fuse box and turn it back on and like i mentioned earlier the final way to escape is the pressure valve exit this one you have to find a valve hidden somewhere on the map take that handle bring it to a specific location turn the valve and then you can go out the valve exit however you have to wait a specific amount of time for the valve to officially open up and open the exit gate so if you've been counting, this gives you four different ways you can escape from the family and knowing exactly where each of these locations are located at on every single map in Texas Chainsaw Massacre gives you a solid advantage against the family members when playing as the victims. Number two, collect items before leaving the basement. So something that Texas Chainsaw Massacre really does a good job at telling you is that you need to collect resources in order to escape. As a matter of fact, before each match begins as the victim, you are told that you need to do this if you want to escape. That's a very extremely important part of the game. However, what it doesn't tell you is that in my opinion, the best time to collect the resources you need are when you're in the basement at the beginning of the game for a couple different reasons actually first off you're usually only going up against one family member when you're in the basement at the beginning of the game that is because leatherface is the only family member that starts out in the basement with you while the others are upstairs usually setting up traps for you when you get up there to try to escape so if you wait until you get out of the basement to go and find more resources odds are is that you're probably more likely to run into a family member upstairs than you are downstairs with leatherface it's much easier to dodge one family member than it is to dodge two or three family members also there are some family members specifically one that can actually poison some of the healing items around the map so if you try to pick up those items you now take damage instead. And some family members like the hitchhiker can lay a trap in front of these special items. So if you're not careful, you can fall right into one of their traps. So in my opinion, while you're in the basement, it's extremely vital to kind of gather the resources you need before you head upstairs. For example, I like to have at least one lockpick after I unlock the basement door 
and one healing item before I go upstairs. Now note that there are specific key items that can only be located upstairs. For example, the fuse and the valve can only be located upstairs. Still, I think it's extremely vital that you should have at least a lockpick before you leave the basement, and that's not including the one that you use to unlock the basement door. Number three, spending attribute points. So while you can watch tutorial videos on this specifically, I just kind of want to brush up on this for a couple different reasons. Specifically, there's some things I recommend and some things I actually don't recommend when it comes to the attribute points. First off, I highly recommend experimenting with these points because all of these different traits that you can spend points on, they each kind of revolve around your personal playstyle. And if you prefer stealth over endurance, then you should put more points on stealth because you prefer being that sneaky, quiet player. That fits me more, honestly. That being said, I want to say one thing straight out the gate, and that is the fact that I don't think it's worth spending points on toughness. Unless maybe you want to use Anna as a main, but that is probably the only way I can see toughness being more beneficial. And that is because when it comes to toughness, it protects you from damage and makes you a little bit stronger and more resistant to these family members attacks. That being said, usually when you find yourself in a situation where you are being attacked by the family members, your toughness isn't going to make that much of a difference because if the chase goes on for too long, you're pretty much doomed anyways. And honestly, you're only chance at survival is getting to a well or escaping and hiding away from the killers. But overall, I personally don't think it's worth spending points on toughness. That being said, I did mention that it's worth experimenting. So make sure you test out all these different traits to figure out which one work for you best because guess what? You can easily just reset them, go back, change things around exactly how you want it as many times as you want. So honestly, it's worth experimenting with every single trait to figure out which fits you the best. If you ask my personal opinion which traits I would go for, personally I really like the stealth trait because I like being quiet and getting stuff done. That's my go-to trait to put points on. I think endurance isn't a bad idea either so that way you can get away from the killer and you have more stamina, but my go-to 100% is stealth and that is just my personal opinion because it matches my playstyle the most. Number 4, Wells and Windows. So I think the game actually mentions wells in the tutorial videos. However, I don't think it really mentions windows. And the funny thing is, is that one of them is extremely helpful. And one of them I feel like is more of a disadvantage than actually an advantage. So let's focus on the wells. Wells are going to be your best friend in this game because every time you are in a chase, your last resort to kind of get out of there immediately is to go down a well because you have the chance and ability to kind of refresh yourself. You can get a fresh start by jumping down on the well. Yes, you take damage. Yes, you're probably gonna get hit a couple times as you climb into the well. But usually more often than not, once you jump into the well, you have the ability to kind of find healing items in the basement, heal yourself and get yourself kind of reevaluated before you go for another attempt at escaping. So the wells are your best friend whenever dealing with the family members, especially if you're looking for a quick getaway. However, let's take a look at windows because windows kind of have a similar effect, except for I don't think they're as useful as wells are. Personally, I find windows take a lot of damage whenever you jump out of them and that's fine because wells take a decent amount of damage as well but for me personally whenever you jump through a window it is more likely for a family member to get to you before you're done kind of recovering from jumping out the window and take damage anyways than it is to actually just keep running away from the family member and try to find a different way to escape from them. I find more often than not, I end up being killed not long after jumping out a window, whereas the well, I at least have an opportunity to kind of reevaluate myself and kind of get back to a stage where I can still escape instead of just ultimately getting tracked down and hunted down almost immediately after jumping out a window. Now, there are situations where jumping out a window is probably necessary usually maybe you find yourself in a dead end or you don't have any other choice you're being chased by multiple killers and you have nowhere to run then fine i can understand that logic and also there's a disadvantage with the well too like there is a chance where the well dropout point is near a basement entrance and if that's the case you jump down that well there is a chance that the killer might be able to get down to that well drop off before you even have a chance to stand up or even worse there could be a killer right around the corner waiting in that specific area for you to drop down that is a possibility as well but in my opinion wells are going to be your best friend more often than not whereas windows are probably a bad idea if you can avoid it 
Number five, grandpa is not a priority for the victims. Despite what the game kind of makes it seem like, grandpa should not be a priority for the victims. Yes, you need to stay quiet and stop moving whenever the grandpa is screaming, so that way you don't reveal your location. However, it seems like the game really motivates you to go and try to incapacitate the grandpa. That's a really good idea to incapacitate him so that way he can't track anybody. However, unless he's in the max level stage, I don't recommend this at all for a couple different reasons. First off, if you get too close to the grandpa, he will alert the rest of the family members of your location and then the family will know exactly where to find you. So if you incapacitate the grandpa, they're all going to know exactly where you are and you better get out of that area pretty quickly or you're going to be in trouble real fast because not one, not two, but all three family members will know exactly where you are. Also, incapacitating the grandpa isn't really that useful early on. Yes, it stops him from being able to locate you guys if he screams and it does lower his power level a little bit, but ultimately I don't think the grandpa is as big of a factor until he hits that max level. Now, if he's at that max level, you better incapacitate him because he's going to reveal your location regardless if you stop moving or not. At that point, if you are able to, you should incapacitate him. Also, another opportunity that I feel like you should definitely incapacitate him is if you're already located by him. If you have a bone scrap on you and you're nearby him already and he's already giving away your location, you might as well just incapacitate him anyways. There's no point in just moving on and trying to hide. The family members already know where you are anyway, so you might as well heck one for the team and stab the hell out of this guy. But other than that, you should not ever make stabbing him a priority unless you just want to take the guy down. Number six, know the family. So I know this is a video about the victims. However, one of the most important aspects about being a victim is actually knowing exactly what you're going up against and actually having an opportunity to play as the family is a good idea even if you want to main as a victim. The reason why I say this is because there are abilities and traits and perks unique to every single killer from the family. And they all do stuff that might catch you off guard if you're not prepared. So if you just play a match or two matches or three matches, play as every single family member if possible, just at least once just so you can learn the different abilities that they have, just so that way you're better prepared as a victim. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. But just to kind of give you a quick rough draft of things you should probably know if you're going up against the family is the fact that people like Sissy and Hitchhiker, they can follow you through crawl spaces and cracks in the wall, but they can't go over those barricades that Leatherface has to destroy. That's something to take note of because you have to know how to escape from these guys. Also know that just by hiding away from the cook or Johnny isn't going to do it for you because Johnny can track footsteps and the cook can listen for sounds that you make. And that's what I mean when I say know the family. If you don't play as a family, you can't learn these different abilities and perks. And you can't prepare yourself as a victim if you don't know what you're going up against. So this is an extremely important aspect when playing as the victim. Learn your enemy. Number seven, secrets of the skill tree. So before I start talking about the skill tree, I wanna let you guys know that it might be a good idea for you to check out the tutorial video on the skill tree in the game, mainly just because I'm specifically gonna be focusing on stuff I felt like the tutorial video either didn't cover that well, or just barely brushed up on it and kind of moved forward in that I felt like you might've missed this small little detail. So if you're looking for something to completely break down the skill tree from beginning to end, maybe check out the tutorial video. If you're looking for stuff that is kind of like secrets or kind of stuff that isn't focused too much on in the tutorial video, then this is the segment for you. So let's jump straight into it. So first off, I need to tell you guys that you do not need to be afraid to reset that skill tree. You're going to experiment with a lot of different perks and a lot of different abilities and kind of getting a chance to experiment with all of those different types of perks that you can unlock with that skill tree is extremely vital to learn exactly what fits your playstyle. You won't know what perks are actually going to be more beneficial to you unless you experiment with all the different types of perks. However, something that the tutorial video doesn't really teach you is that if you actually go to your character loadout and you look at the perks, you can see all the different perks that your character can unlock for themselves through this skill tree. And you can see exactly what type of perks do you think you want to try to aim and go for whenever you're going through that skill tree. And then once you actually go through the skill tree, you can try to unlock it. And once you unlock it, you can create the perfect combination of perks for your personal playstyle. And I find that to be really cool and ideal when playing as the victim. Now, early on, I wouldn't get attached to any specific perks. I made that mistake right away and I'm glad I finally decided to reset it. But keep in mind, when you reset your skill tree, 
Yes, it takes away all the perks that you unlocked and you would have to unlock them again, but take note of two different things. If you got your specific perk to say level three, which is the max level for an individual perk, then that level will stay the same if you unlock that perk again later on when you go through the skill tree. And the second thing to take note of is that you will actually get all of your points immediately back that you spent on the skill tree. Meaning you get all of those skill points back and you can just continuously just go through the skill tree over and over, over again until you get the right combination of perks that you specifically want for your character. Number eight, don't panic. So while this might seem really obvious to some of you guys, a lot of you guys out there really make this mistake early on when you first start playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre or when you first start playing like a game like Dead by Daylight. And that is the fact that you let yourself panic and you give yourself away when you don't need to. So whenever you're playing this game as the victim, the most important thing is to remain quiet and calm because if you let yourself get too overwhelmed, you're going to reveal yourself to the family members and then you're gonna find yourself in a situation that you don't wanna be in. And when I say quietly, I also mean slowly, extremely slow to the point where you're not running into the bone traps that are making a lot of noises or you're not standing up running across the field where the killers can see you. But more importantly, the reason why I say slowly is because it takes away your stamina. And if you are running around wasting all that valuable stamina when no one is chasing you, and then maybe you get about halfway through your stamina meter and then one of the family members will locate you and start chasing you, well guess what? Now you only have half a bar of stamina to work with to help escape from the family member. And that is not ideal at all because you're gonna need every single drop of that stamina to help you escape. Otherwise, you're gonna wind up dead. And that's why it's extremely vital to not spin that stamina until you actually have to. Yes, you can always rebuild your stamina. All you have to do is walk for a little bit and you regain your stamina bar. However, if you are running all the time and then a killer finds you, you already pretty much depleted most of your stamina before they even start chasing you and then you are probably more than likely going to get caught and end up dead. So definitely moving slowly and quietly is the ideal way to go about this game as the victim. And that's why I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the different attribute points. Me personally, I like to put my points on stealth to help me be a little bit more quieter whenever I do different task throughout the game but there is one other thing i want you to consider when i say don't panic and that is the fact that hiding is always going to be more valuable than running especially when dealing with the family members the family members have a lot more stamina they can run a lot longer and they can definitely mess you up if you end up finding yourself in a situation where you're in a chase for too long hiding is always extremely more valuable in this game versus running because eventually they're going to catch up to you whereas if you find the right moment to hide in a wardrobe or a freezer or even a field that kind of hides your location then yeah you need to take that option whenever it's available Number nine, communicate with your team. So I said this in my review that I did on this game a few days ago, but I feel like this game is so much more fun if you can communicate with the rest of the players on your team, mainly because there's so many different combinations of abilities and perks that you can work together with if you're able to communicate to each other about these abilities. Something I use as an example a lot has to do with Sunny's ability because I feel like his ability is the most teamwork-ish type of ability in the game because he has the ability to actually sense sounds around him and he can actually locate where the killers are before they enter a room and this can notify the rest of the team where those killers are located at. Or if you're working on the exit gate, you can have your partner work on the gate to get it unlocked with the lockpick and the Sunny can use his ability to look around the map to figure out when they are on their way so that way they can figure out if they need to run or try to finish up the task and get out. However, I get that not every single match allows you to vocally communicate with your team. Whether that be because you're not able to go on game chat or everybody else is in a party chat or something similar to that situation, not every single match is going to allow you to communicate vocally with your teammates. But because of some of the perks and abilities in this game, you don't need to actually communicate vocally. There's two different ways that can actually communicate to your team without you saying a single word. For example, there are abilities that allow you to actually show a highlighted door after you unlock it. I use that perk all the time because every time I get out through an exit gate, everyone in the game can actually see which exit gate I got out through because I just finished unlocking it and I escaped at the same time. So without saying a single word, 
everybody on my team knows exactly which exegate I took and that is currently available to escape through as well. But even if you didn't have that available to you, the game actually offers another unique way for you to communicate to your team without actually using the vocal chat. And that is the text chat. You are able to actually message in the text box and notify your team about different things you have to tell them or warn them about. So because of these two different abilities, you are able to communicate with your team without saying a single word on vocal chat. Number 10, don't always stick together. Do you know that famous horror movie trope? What was it? It was, um, don't ever split up. Yeah, that doesn't really apply for Texas Chainsaw Massacre the game because in my opinion, it's actually a little bit more dangerous and dumber to actually stick together as a big group than it is just to split up and do your own thing. And the reason why I feel like that deals with a couple different things. The most obvious one is that you make a lot more noise as a group. So that's already a big problem because as I mentioned earlier, making noise is not the ideal way to play this game. But second reason why I think it's a bad idea and personally probably my favorite reason why it's a bad idea because it's the one that is most likely to bite you in the ass. And that is the fact that if you are playing with one or two other people and you're in a group together and then you get to a specific point where you run to a family member who is coming from one of two different directions and the other direction is a crack in the wall. Well, guess what? You have to wait slowly as a victim crawls through the crack because only one person can fit through the crack at a time which means you have to wait for everybody else to get through that crack before you can eventually get your turn to get through that crack which time is money in this game and that is plenty of time for the killer to catch up to you and mess you up before you get through that crack and don't forget the reason number three has to do with the fact that there are four exit gates and some of the gates are going to be guarded every now and then However, if you guys are going to different exit gates trying to do the task to open those different exit gates, you create different options in case one of those plans fall through. And having more options versus having only one option is obviously more ideal. So in my opinion, trying to stick together as a one big group is extremely dangerous and kind of stupid, honestly. Now there are some benefits to it, maybe teaming up with one other person just to combine perks and assist each other. But let me know, what do you guys think? In the comments down below, do you think it's a good idea to actually stick together as a group or do you think it makes sense to kind of split up? Because honestly, I think splitting up is the ideal situation. That doesn't mean you abandon your team. It just means you go and try to complete things on your own and you communicate to your team about what's going on. There's plenty of different strategies when it comes to being a victim in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I love to know what your strategies are. What things am I missing for this list? Anyways, thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Nerdspace, guys, and as always, I will see you on the next one. Take care.